Well, somebody say amen. Amen. <laughs> man, alive. That's great music. Where's the PA guy? Yeah, turn the treble. Turn the bass down. Turn the treble up. You say, why do you do that? Because Brother Howells did it. <laughs> you say, why did he do it? Haven't the foggiest idea. But <clears throat> he's not bothered me at all. <laughs> Hadn't affected me at all. Take your Bibles, if you will. Turn to Psalm 126 with three verses, three, three scriptures tonight. And uh, thank you for letting me be a part of the Emmanuel family. It's, uh, I cannot begin to tell you how much of a blessing it's been to me. Now, I'm not, people are asking, are you settled in? No, I'm living out of a suitcase. You know what that's like. <clears throat> and uh, my stuff should hopefully be here this, this week. But um, you have been so gracious to me and so kind, and, and I appreciate it. In 2017, um, we chose to join Emmanuel Baptist Church, my wife and I. I, uh, I your pastor has been so kind to me. There are 42,000 Southern Baptist churches in America. There are 20,000 plus independent Baptist churches in America. And... I, I, my wife and I chose th this church because of your pastor, because of the DNA that he has. And uh, I, I, we, <laughs> I remember <laughs> one Sunday morning, she was watching on the Internet, <clears throat> and uh, she's watching, and he gets up to preach, and my wife said, that's not my pastor. <clears throat> Shut him off. So, uh, <laughs> we shut you off, buddy. We, we turned to Bugs Bunny and watched that for a while. <laughs> but uh, you, you've been so kind. We were really, honestly, my wife and I were, humanly speaking, at the bottom. And we didn't know what our future held for us. Had no idea. And we were struggling. And then your pastor called me and said, I'm praying for you. Anything I can ever do to be of help, you let me know. And I can't begin to tell you how much of an encouragement that was. <clears throat> and I, of course, Dr. Tom and I got off the ark together. <laughs> uh, his job was to name the animals. He made a few mistakes. <laughs> but uh, I was a part of the first four-year class of Hiles Anderson College and uh, traveled with Brother House 22 years, not every week, but the last 11 years, we were together every week with, with Brother Hiles. And um, so I've, I've got that DNA in me. I can't help it. Um, if I get a little rough with you tonight, <clears throat> just, just pray for this old man, will you? Because I don't mean to be rough. That's a lie. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I want to help you. I honestly do. And I feel somewhat intimidated because of the, this is the pastor's pulpit, this is the pastor's ministry, his church, and I wouldn't do anything to hurt him. I'll fight for him. I'll die for him. Well, not tonight. Uh, <laughs> but but I, 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 please understand me a little bit. I, I, uh, I quantify everything. I, was, I went to Michigan State University in 1963. Abraham Lincoln was president. But I went there and studied general business and accounting. <clears throat> I love numbers. And I quantify everything, probably too much. But I, I wanted to be an accountant because I didn't like people. Now, if you know any accounting people, you'll understand the, the psyche. There's something wrong with us. But I, I just want to put me in a little corner, give me an adding machine, that's how old I am, and leave me alone. But I went to a sword conference in 1972 and heard Dr. Howes and Dr. Rice, and my whole world was turned right side up. And I hit that altar, and I gave my life completely to the Lord. I told my wife, I said, I, there'll, there'll be no more golf, there'll be no more football, I'm going to go with him on Saturdays. And uh, 
And I, I made up my mind I was going to try to do everything I could to try to win people to Christ. So tonight, with that in mind, maybe you can understand me a little bit. Uh, this is not going to be a typical sermon tonight, but I want to help you. I want everybody to get a pen out, and I'm going to give you tonight what I know will work. It's not something, I'm not some professor in an ivory tower somewhere who's never done anything. I, uh, I, God has blessed my ministry, and God did that. Not, not me, but God did it. But I want you tonight, I don't think you, I don't, please don't, I don't think you understand. Uh, you've got a great pastor, but don't kill him. He cannot carry, and I'm speaking now as a veteran, he cannot carry the burden of Jacksonville on his shoulders. You'll kill him. Somewhere in here, we're going to have to learn our individual responsibilities. So I'm going to put the B on you tonight. Um, with that in mind, three, three scriptures. Let's go to Psalm 126, verse 6, and then I'll turn to the other two scriptures. The other scriptures, I'll have you write them down. But we're going to start out with Psalm 126, verse 6. If you have that, let's stand and stretch just for a moment here. Psalm 126 and verse 6. The scripture says, He that goeth forth. The scripture doesn't say, Y'all come. They weren't beating the doors down to get in here this morning. They're in darkness. You're in the light. They're lost. You're saved. They're blind, and you have sight. So for us to sit here and say the, the blind are going to find us, they're not going to because they're blind. Now, I'm going to shock you. Church is not meant for lost people. Church is meant for saved people. The bus ministry is not meant for lost boys and girls and men and women. It's meant for the saved. Now, when you populate your church with a bunch of unsaved people because you have an attraction model <clears throat> and you get them to come lost and they end up mingling with you, you're going to be in trouble. So that's why I said go. The reason you go is because you have the seed, you have the gospel. Now you've got to go to them. I... I've gone to every one of my neighbors in that neighborhood where I'm living. <clears throat> I've got to start with my own family. Then I've got to start my own block. And then to go then to the uttermost. Here's what he said. He that goeth forth and weepeth. Boy, you've got to have compassion. People, can you imagine burning in hell? Forever and ever. Can you imagine the rich man? Just one drop of water. The agony. Weepeth, bearing precious seed. And we have the word of God. Shall, and here's the sermon, underline it, doubtless. Doubtless. That's what it says. I thought we were Bible believers. Well, if we're Bible believers, then we ought to believe the word doubtless. Doubtless. All in the original. You look, you look old enough to have been around with the original, but, but there are no originals. Now, here's what he said. He that goeth forth and weepeth. Now, you'll weep after you go. You don't weep before you go. You don't come to the altar to get a burden. You come to the altar to make a commitment. Then... When you look on the crowd, then like Jesus was moved then. So you, you, uh, you, you, you get married, then the burden comes. You get, take a bus route, then the burden comes. You get a Sunday school class, then the burden comes. And, and mother-in-laws, <laughs> that's where the weeping comes in. 
<laughs> Don't get me wrong. I love my wife's mother-in-law. <laughs> Boy, you're slow, aren't you? He that goeth forth and weepeth. We may never get out of this verse. Bearing precious seed shall, here's the sermon, doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Here's the sermon. The great commission and the great commandment. You, got, you, you have to follow me. The great commission and the great commandment. Father, help me now to help. I pray that we'll make decisions like good, solid decisions that will impact the future of this area with the gospel. And not only that, but the world. God, help us. The light that shines brightest at home will shine brightest away from home. So help us. Talk to us. In Jesus' name, Holy Ghost, we beg for your presence. Amen. You may be seated. Now let me give you the second scripture, Matthew chapter 28, <clears throat> verses 19 and 20, which we refer to as the Great Commission. I'll read it to you. You already know it, but I'm going to read it to you. Go. The very first word is go. Not sit here and wait for them to come to us. We come, fill up 18 inches of pew, or 24, or 42. We're growing in the Lord. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe. Now underline that word observe. We don't teach them to go, we take them with, them, with us. So they can observe how to do it. All right? To observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Now, with that in mind, go to Acts chapter 2 with me, please, in verse 47 for our third scripture. Acts chapter 2, verse 47. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church, underline this word, daily, such as should be saved. Daily, not on Sunday, but daily. All right? The Great Commission, okay, I just preached in the Virginia Beach area, and they build ships there. And when they get ready to commission them to the service for the Navy, they'll have a, a, a ceremony, and they'll take a, a bottle of 7-Up and break it up. On, <laughs> that's not true. Uh, and they'll commission that ship for service. Now, this church has the Great Commission organized. You have a pastor that's organized you, taught you. So we're commissioned corporately as a church. So when we have soul winning time, you ought to get your carcass down here. <clears throat> that's the corporate part. That's the encouraging part. So we show up and encourage each other. When I went to Longview, we had 13 people out on, quote, visitation, and that's what they did. They drank coffee, ate ice cream, and invited people to Sunday school. But that's not the Great, uh, great Commission. We're supposed to go, win them, wet them, and work them. We've got to get the gospel to them. Now, part of that is the Great Commission. Organization. Where the pastor organizes a church... To you're taught, you're trained, then you take people with you, and they observe the winning of people to Christ. That's the Great Commission. But wait a minute. There's also the Great Commandment. You're supposed to do it on a daily basis. Not just the time that we're organized to do it, but you ought to do it on Monday. You ought to do it on Tuesday. Now, the Acts Church was daily. It wasn't weekly. So somewhere in here, we're going to have to, I, now we need to support the organized soul winning. So if, we, if there's a time the pastor says, this is where we need to come and be taught uh, and trained and then sent out two by two, then we ought to support that. Now, our, our, we ended up with eight soul winning times, and those times, organized times, were because somebody came and said, I can't make it Thursday. Well, when can you make it? I'll make it Monday. All right, I'll be here. I'll go with you, or a staff man will go with you. We'll have somebody go with you. Don't tell me that we don't have a time for you, because we'll make a time for you. 
Now, that's exactly the mindset of your pastor. So please understand the Great Commission is a church corporately being organized and sent out two by two to win people to Christ, pick them up, bring them, the Bible says, to church, walk them down the aisle, get them baptized, put them in the pew and preach the devil out of them. Now, that's exactly the Great Commission. And you are organized here. That's what I love about uh, our pastor and I love about this church. This isn't haphazard. Everything's done on purpose, precept upon precept. And you ought to thank God for that. But you ought to support it. You ought to be here physically supporting it. All right? Now, the great commandment, I'm going to shock you. I'm going to shock you. Brother Hiles never had church-wide soul winning. It wasn't until the college got started that he started the Foster Club or the Fishman's Club because he had so many stupid students like me coming in, and he organized for the students. And the students were supposed to be coming from soul-winning churches. But all of a sudden, we had dozens and hundreds of students who had never even been soul-winning. So for the house and his wisdom, organized and got the, got the church organized. Okay, I'm going to shock you. The A bus routes, when I was there in the early 70s, only averaged 20 to 25 of us. Jojo Moffat, Roy Moffat were crazy. They're mentally unbalanced. There's something wrong with them. But they'll run 75 on their bus on an A bus route. But the average bus only ran 20 to 25. The A Sunday schools only ran 20 to 25 per Sunday school class. We had 800 Sunday school classes that averaged 20, 25 apiece. Well, that's 16, almost 20,000 right there. Now, there were a few large auditorium classes that were like catch-alls. But Brother Hiles, on purpose, as your pastor, as our pastor has done, has organized so that we can reach people with the gospel and train them. Now, the Great Commission is, is being done here. But let me say to you, some, okay, I had four children when I was there in the early 70s, and our kids received a, a, a visit from their Sunday school teachers every week. And as a dad, I, I, I was shocked, first of all, but boy, did I love it. I wanted my children to have a Sunday school teacher that cared about them. And sometimes pastors will say to me, my teachers won't visit. Well, the classes are too big. Somewhere in here, we've got to get to the heart of the individual the value of one. And if we can understand the value of one and that all of us do our part to reach that one, you'd be shocked at what would happen. The last year I pastored, we baptized 4,464 people. 153 of those were ones that God allowed me to lead to Christ to pick up and bring to church. My question is, where'd the other 4,300 come from? They weren't me. They were the dear people sitting in the pews who led people to Christ on a regular basis. Okay, outside of our office area, we had a mailbox. We had convert slips like what we have here. And when they lead people to Christ, they put it in that mailbox. Every day, Mary Robinson, my records secretary, who's in heaven now, she would take that out and type it up and put it in the computer. Tuesday, she would take it out, type it up, put it in the computer. Wednesday, she would take it out, type it up, put it in the computer. Thursday night was our big soul winning night. We had average 625 people out soul winning on Thursday night. Then they would fill out their converse slip, put it there, and she'd gather it up on Friday morning, Saturday morning, and Sunday morning. One day she said to me, Preacher, I, I think I've got something that may shock you. I said, what? She said, we have more people saved during the week than we do Thursday night. I said, you're kidding. She said, no. I told it up every day. I know. Now, what did that mean? That meant that it was like the church of Acts, daily, daily. Not all of us here have the same doctor. So that means if, if, if we wait for us to, on Saturday morning to reach our doctor, it's not going to happen, probably. But how about you on Monday when you go for your appointment, said, hey, doc, let me examine you now. That's what I did with Dr. Pearson when I went to Longview. He met my family, said, and I said, uh, Dr. Pearson, it's my turn now. He looked at me, and he said, what do you mean, your turn? I said, have a seat. I said, I, I, I want to know something. You're going to be my doctor. 
And by the way, I'm paying for this. I said, if you die today, know for sure you go to heaven. He laughed, and he said, 25 years, and nobody's ever asked me that question. He said, yes, I'm saved. And he thanked me. Well, somebody say amen. amen. Now, somewhere in here, you're going to have to, not all of us have, do you have paper boys now? I don't even know. <laughs> Different people that deliver the paper. Uh, you, you know, the beautician you fellows go to? Uh, that's a joke there, folks. Now, somewhere in here, you've got to understand, we, the word world, when it's going to all the world, doesn't, doesn't necessarily confine itself to Nigeria. Uh, it's your world. And all of us here have different people that we do business with in our world. Now, it's up to you to find out if they're saved or not. So you have the Great Commission, get your carcass down here when it's time to go soul winning. Get here. And let's work together. Go two by two and do the best we can. But also, we have forgotten about the great commandment of doing it every day in your world. Now, if you will do that, you'd be amazed. Oh, well, listen. Well, I was baptized 15,000 people in one year with a program of his people winning souls daily. All over America, we have church-wide soul winning, but somehow we forgot about the daily business. For some reason, we seem to have, it's escaped us. Oh, yes, we're a soul winning church. We meet on Saturday morning at 930. Well, wait a minute now. Are we going to win Jacksonville in this area to Christ 930 on Saturday morning? It's going to be a part of it. But that's the Great Commission, but that's not the Great Commandment. So your world, you have people in your world, they will not listen to anybody else but you. I've led people to Christ because I was born in Arkansas. And don't bring up Bill Clinton. At least we got rid of him. Uh, I've led people to Christ because I lived in Michigan for 20 years. I've led people to Christ because I went to Michigan State University. I've led people to Christ because I played football. I've led people to Christ because of my wife's 50 surgeries. Uh, I took opportunity. I wasn't mad at God. I wasn't upset with God. It was opportunity. We understood that for the furtherance of the gospel. Well, we had people saved that we couldn't have reached on a Thursday night soul winning. We had them saved because they were in our world. Oh, listen, you could have a, you take yourself too serious. You're too, far too serious. Get you a joke book. There's something wrong with you. When people cuss you at the door, laugh at them. Look at them and say, whoa, are you a Baptist deacon? Guy crumpled up my track one time, threw it down. I picked it up and smoothed it out. I said, don't do that. It's got my picture on it. <laughs> now, somewhere in here, you, you're going to have to get into their world <laughs> and, and, that, are in, that are in your world to keep them from going to hell. And they cross your path. It, it's, it's, it's on purpose. Ephesians 2.10, write it down. Ordained works. God has prepared people for you and you alone to lead to Christ. There are people out there who will listen to you that will not listen to me. And there are people who listen to me that won't listen to you. There are bald-headed people out there that will listen to you. That's a, I'm joking with you. He's probably a big giver and I don't know it. Uh, now, somewhere in here, you're going to have to understand this is a serious business. So don't feel like you've just washed your hands clean because you showed up on Saturday morning. Come on, somebody say Amen. All you men, stand up. Stand up. All you men, stand up. Uh, now, when I uh, get to a good punching point, say amen. amen. Jesus saves. Amen. Heaven's real. Amen. Hell's hot. Amen. We've got to go soul winning. Amen. Now, sit down and keep it up. Amen. Knuckleheads. All you women, stand up. All you women, stand up. Now, I don't think you ought to holler amen, <laughs> roll in the aisles, run to the wall, get a nod on your head and call or for a healing. But it sure would help if you'd smile. I know you left your teeth home, but gum it, baby, gum it. Uh, say, uh-huh. Say it again, uh-huh. Keep it down. Sit down and keep it up. <laughs> you can encourage each other. And I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to win Jacksonville to Christ at 9.30 on Saturday morning. Somebody say amen now. It's not going to happen. It's going to happen when we support the Great Commission, 
But when we on our own every day support the great commandment, that's when things begin to happen. And when things begin to happen, let me tell you something, you couldn't stop it if you tried to. You stir these baptismal waters back here and you'll get God's attention and he'll put the angels on the ration to take care of you. Somebody say amen. Now, here's the thing. Well, you, you know, I, th I think some of you are Catholics. I don't think you're Baptist. Catholics hire their priests to do their praying for them. You think you hired you a pastor to do your soul winning for you. Come on, somebody say amen. We have got to get it to where it draws a circle around yourself and say, okay, I'm going to support the Great Commission. I'm going to do that. But I'm going to do more than that. I'm going to every day give the gospel to somebody in my world, in my world, my world that I, business-wise, that I can, it's different than your world. So why don't we just take this to the second level? Well, the house used to have a sermon he preached on the second mile, and he called it the happy mile. You're not really a happy Christian. You do what's required of you. You're, you're, you're unprofitable, the Bible says. I don't want to be unprofitable. I fly every week in the world. I've been in every state in the Union, but North Dakota, and I ain't going because it's too cold there. I've been in 17 foreign countries, and we, we've flown a lot, a lot of these countries, and I, I love every, every minute of it. But when I get on that plane, I, I, it's a different world. The guy sitting next to me, I don't know the guy. He doesn't know me, but he's going, if he didn't want the gospel, he shouldn't be sitting there. That's not my fault. I was on a plane one time, and the lady, she's coming down, she was handing out liquor. And the guy over here said, I'll take a Bloody Mary. And I said, well, God bless her. I didn't know she was wounded. <laughs> the stewardess laughed, and the guy next to me laughed, and the plane went, whoa, like that, and boom, like that. And she dropped liquor all over my tie. And she said, oh, Reverend, I am so sorry. I said, don't worry. I'll, I'll take <laughs> The guy's sitting next to me. He said, you a Baptist preacher? Said, yeah, he said, I didn't know you Baptists knew how to have fun. I said, let me finish this time. We're really going to have some fun. <laughs> it's we, you're, too, you're too uptight. You, you're way too uptight. People are going to hell. We've got to get the gospel to them. And we can't wait for them to come to us. They're blind. They're in darkness. You have the light. Go to them in your world, in your world. Uh, we find ourselves almost like Pilate washing our hands. Well, I was there Saturday. Well, it, 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 please, I'm begging you tonight. Don't kill our pastor. I know what it's like to fly in late at night in East Texas and see all those lights in that rural area, all of that Arctotex area, and all of a sudden the tears begin to flow, and I, I feel the pain and the heartache. I'm responsible for everybody, every light that's on down there. I'm responsible for that area. That's why we had 40 bus routes. That's why they got sometimes home at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning on Monday. Why? Because I didn't want them to go to hell, and I, had, I felt the burden of it. It almost killed me. You'd have to be a pastor to understand what I'm saying. But I beg you tonight, individually, do something about it. 29 years, every Sunday, I had a convert down the aisle and baptized. To God be the glory. But I worked at it. So I want to, I, I told you I was a number, I'm a numbers nut. So get your pen out. I want you to write some things down. Don't forget the word doubtless. He, he said, doubtless shall come again. Now, either you believe God or you don't believe God. It may You may believe God, not do anything about it. But I believe God, and I wanted to find a way to do something about it. So here's what I'm preaching now. Write down the number 15. Here's what I've learned. 15. 15. Come on, get your pen out, write it down. 15. If you will give the gospel to 15 different people, 
in one seven-day period, something's going to happen. Oh, say, I can't do that on Saturday, 15 I can't. I don't have enough time. Who said you had to do it on Saturday? How about two a day? And I'm not talking about handing somebody a track. I'm talking about going from A to Z with the gospel. A to Z. I'm not saying that all 15 get saved. I am saying that we ought to challenge ourselves and set some goals for ourselves. And if we'll do that and work at it, every Sunday night I'd sit in the pastor's chair as a, a, of LBT. And I, after the, we were baptizing, the day was over. And so on, I'd get a card out and I would put 15 lines on that card every Sunday night without fail. And my challenge was I was going to have a name for every one of those lines on that three by five. Somebody say amen now. On that card by by next Sunday, if you will do that week in and week out and week in and week out and week in and week out, I say the word doubtless will work for you. Well, if you don't put anything into it, doubtless. Now, there's some numbers I don't like. <laughs> the doctor said, now, Pastor, it's time for your physical. Insurance requires it. Okay. You have to get on the scale. I ain't getting on no scale. You have to, Pastor. I said, I don't want to get on a scale. Well, we can't do this if you don't get on a scale. I said, I don't want to get on a scale. I was 11 pounds when I was born. <laughs> Food jumps on me. And it's not the good kind either. I said, look, lady, if you've got one for my left leg, one for my right leg, I'll get on there. And she laughed. I got on the scale. Women run my life. After we got all done, you know what she said to me? The female doctor, have you ever thought about a low-fat diet? I said, no, no, all my fat's low. I don't have to think about it. <laughs> and I looked at her and said, have you thought about plastic surgery? But anyway, <laughs> there's some numbers I don't like. But if this is a matter of challenging me to see people saved and say I'm saved on a regular basis. Listen, if you, if you baptize one a week, that's 52. If half of them stick, that's 26. And if all of us do our part, there's no telling what could happen. This could be the next First Baptist Church like Dr. Hiles had in Hamlet. You've got the population. You've got the knowledge, the information. You've got the pastor. The music is terrific. The messages are fantastic. But get off your blessed assurance and go tell people. And it's not just Saturday. But I'm just telling you, there are 20,000 independent Baptist churches across America, and all of them got a soul in time. But they're not producing. This is a matter of production. Oh, say, all you, you, all you care about is numbers. I mean, it takes numbers to reach numbers. I mean, the whole book in the Bible about it. Get mad at God, but don't talk to me about it. I'm just, I'm trying to challenge you tonight. And I'm not just pulling this out of thin out of the air. I start my 52nd year here on April the 2nd of ministry. I know what I'm talking about. And I plead with you tonight. You've got the opportunity here. You've got to take advantage of it. And God is not through with America. Our church grew from 159 to run 2,000 in Sunday school and 10,000 membership and gave $9.3 million to missions. We started 1,700 churches around the world. Don't tell me that it doesn't work. Don't tell me those days are over. I don't want to hear it because you have the man of God. You've got the message from God. You've got the Holy Ghost of God living in you, and it's time quit using Saturday as your way out. Give the gospel to 15 different people. Second number seven. This will not work unless you do it in a seven-day period. Write it down. You got a pen? You need a pen? I'll give you a pen. You need a pen? You got a pen. All right, write it down. I was preaching. If you remember, Dr. Tom, we were at a big convention center in Monterey. Tommy got, I don't know how many, three, 4,000 people there. And Tommy came to me, and he said, Look, he said, I saw you do this one time. I want you to do it tonight. I said, what's that? He said, I, 
I want you to have every one of my staff members stand up, and I want you to kick them in the rear. Tell them, get with it, win souls. He said, I, I, I want you to, I said, Tommy, these people don't know me down here. <laughs> I said, it ain't going to go over very well. He said, now, look, I'm the pastor, and I'm asking you to do this, and you, you know, do it or not do it. Well, yes, sir, I'd be glad to. <laughs> so he put his staff up there, and I stood him up. Dr. Tom was there. He saw it. I kicked every one of them. Bless God, you ought to go so Go soul winning. Go soul winning. Got done. Dr. Hiles come walking down. He was the second preacher. Danny uh, was, Ortiz was my <laughs> translator. And we were standing there, and I said, Danny, when he gets up there, he's going to bend me over and kick me in the rear. And he said, how do you know? I said, I know him like the back of my hand. Brother Howell's come walking up. He said, bend over, Bob. <laughs> Man, he kicked me. The two, I, the, remember the ring? Every once in a while, boom, he'd, he'd use you, and then boom, and boy, my head would ring for about three days. And, buddy, when he kicked me, I mean, it hurt my tailbone. I mean, whop like that. But I thank God that we've got men of God who stand strong in this matter of trying to keep people out of hell, enough so that it'll interrupt your schedule. To a day. I'm not, I'm not saying that I had 15 and say, if you can do it, that's great. Two a day. Carry tracks with you. <laughs> I, I go to McDonald's. I, I'm, I go to McDonald's just, just, anyway, just down the road. And uh, so they, they know me now. They come through there and hand out tracks and they, they say, they look at my, said, this is the preacher, man. I didn't say it. They said that. So I pulled up and giving them all tracks and everything. And uh, they, I, it, it's, a, it's amazing. They'll ask you if you get in their world. Got one lady said to me, this, well, you've given us a track every time you come through here. I said, yeah, I'm going to keep on giving it until you get saved too. <laughs> and she said, is this true what it said? I can know about going there. Absolutely. That's not on Saturday. That's during the week. I'm saying challenge yourself to give the A to Z to 15 different people in one seven-day period. Amen. And then start it again. Make it a way of life. All right, next number. Write down. Five. Five. By Saturday night, my goal was to have five people lined up that I could pick up myself on Sunday morning. By the way, the church starts at Sunday school. But have a set a goal. I'm not saying all 15 get saved, but I'm saying you better challenge yourself to give the gospel to 15 different people if you want if you want results. Doubtless, is that what it said? Doubtless, did God mean that, or was that a mistake? It's not a mistake. God said, "Go and weep, bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again." Bringing, bringing, challenge yourself tonight. To give the gospel to 50. I'm not saying all 15 get saved. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying give them a chance. Give them a chance. Then I'm challenging you to do it in one seven-day period. Do, do, you, do you like challenges in life? I do. Everything except weight loss. I hate that one. But I, I, like, cha I like challenges. I love it. And then the number five, by Saturday night, before you lay your head on that pillow at night, you ought to have five names of people who said, come by and pick me up in the morning. Don't look at me that way. I'm trying to help you. It's not going to hurt you. But if everybody, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, if the ten people sitting right down here in the front would do this and do it regularly, there's no telling what could happen around here. Come on, somebody say amen to me. Is the word doubtless, is it right? Did God make a mistake when he put it in there? I don't think so. And neither do you, by the way. First number, 15. Second number, 7. Third number, 5. Have five lined up by Saturday night who said, come pick me up. Now, don't let them say, I know where the church is. I know you know where the church is, but I'm going to pick you up. But I can, I can find the church. I know you can find it, but I want to pick you up. After a while, they're going to... They're going to look at me, and, 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 and I'll say to them, let me tell you the real reason. And they'll go, yeah, I knew there was a real reason. There's a devil, and he don't want you to go to church. 
And by then, if I say to him, you think I'm going to come by in the morning? There ain't no doubt you're coming by. And I am. Somewhere in here, challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. If half of us get it to working, there's no telling what would go on here. The first number is 15. I'm not saying all 15 get saved. But I'm saying please challenge yourself to give the gospel to 15 different people. Next number, seven, one seven-day period. Next number, five, have five lined up by Saturday night. Next number is two. Here's what I've discovered. On an average, two will come. Three will lie to you. <laughs> you ever get one to give you a vacant lot number address? <laughs> Oh, don't get mad at them. They're scared. Oh, don't get, don't get. Sinners are sinners. I mean, a dog barks, a cat meows, and sinners cuss. Don't be shocked at it. That's their nature. And by the way, it was your nature too. But I'm just saying week after week after week of daily is going to pay off. That's the word doubtless. The last number is the number one. On an average, you'll have a convert baptized. On an average. On an average. <laughs> I, we had so many people when I first, Brother Roloff, oh, he was my friend. He preached for me when I pastored up in Illinois. He preached for me. He, in fact, he, he called me when I took Longview Baptist Temple. And he said to me, why didn't you call me before you took that church? And I, I, I said, I didn't know I was supposed to. <laughs> he said, look, let, let me come up and welcome you to Texas. I said, that will be fine. He bought a full-page ad in the local paper welcoming me to Texas. He preached on a Sunday night. And in the office, he said to me, look, <clears throat> I think I can get you six months. I, I'm a jokester, and I, I, probably too much. Well, I, and I laughed. I said, well, I hope so. <laughs> he went out, stood behind my pulpit. I sat there. He, he said, uh, John, good to see you. Susan, good to see you. He called a half a dozen names. And I'm sitting in my chair saying, he knows these people like they're relatives. We got back to the office, and I jokingly said, did you get me six months? Nope. I got you three. As serious as could be. I went to, that was in January of 1981. I went to pastor school in March of 1981, and the split took place while I was gone. He was a prophet. But then he told me, he said, they, Brother Bob, are like queers. They can't reproduce. <laughs> well, that'll cost us for YouTube. Well, Bob, if I were you, I'd, I'd take care of those that produce. Queers can't pr reproduce. So I, I put a guy at the door of my office. I said, I don't want to, these resignations are coming in. And I don't, don't want to see them. You just stand there and collect them. So I had a deacon stand there. And he, collected, he, he, he came to me. He said, I, I can't do this again. You get somebody else. I said, well, how many tonight? He said, we had five resigned tonight. Really? He said, hey, hey, preacher, we'll never make it. I said, hey, well, come here. Went to the back door. We had 12 sections of the Lord for back in that time. I built a balcony with 10 sections, opened up the back door, and I said, count them on that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, how many are there? Ten. And how many resigned? Five. I said, those ten are going to get baptized tonight. Looks to me like we're ahead by five. Well, somebody say Amen. If you got more for you than they got for them, you'll make it. Well, you have to win souls. The Great Commission is great, and it's solid here at this church, and your pastor's leading it, the staff is leading it, and we know it will work, and he pushes it, and now it's going to affect the world. But I'm going to tell you something. Unless you decide to do the Great Commandment, it's not going to do what you think it will do. Now, you may run me out of town after this sermon tonight. That's okay. But I'm just telling, I'm trying to help you. 
I'm just telling you. Look, I'm 78. I got one foot in a grave and another on a banana peel. Dr. Tom and I were talking this morning and said, where's that boat? <laughs> now, I'm just, I'm just, for your sake, not my sake, for you, this, your children's sake, not my sake, for your grandchildren's sake, not my sake, take the challenge. Take the challenge. So starting tonight, I'd get me a three-by-five card and put 15 lines on it. Just two a day. Take the challenge. And see what happens. But don't kill our pastor. Brother Hiles, he, he preached the sermon, The Bush Still Burns. And in Monterey, he stayed up all night, didn't go to sleep that night. Mrs. Hiles told me that he called her and said, I, I think I've had a heart attack. I'm not going to bed because I don't want to die in Mexico. And I understand. After he died... The doctor held Brother Hiles' heart in his hand and told Mrs. Hiles it was leaking everywhere. It was a worn-out heart. I couldn't have saved him because his heart was worn out. That's a pastor with a heart. And your pastor has a heart. Now you just let, let Monday come and go. Don't listen to me now. Don't listen to me. Just let the, and when you go to bed Monday night and you go to sleep, I hope this thing haunts you. Did you give the gospel to two people today? I love the young people we got around here. Isn't that exciting? But what are we teaching them to do? They ought to observe, as the scripture says, what we're doing. I beg you tonight, not for my sake. I've lived four years longer than Brother Hiles. I'm okay with it. But I can't, I still can't believe it. And you can't either, can you? And don't think there are not times when Dr. Tom and I just weep. Oh, how we need that man of God. But he wore his heart out. Don't let your pastor die too soon when you could have done something about it. I want to come back here and slap the whole bunch of you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Let's get off our blessed assurance. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you come on Saturdays. I'm, I'm glad. I was here. I made sure every neighbor got the gospel. This my neighbor. I don't know these people. But please take the challenge. Let's stand our heads about, our eyes are closed.